So just kind of look around and what, what feeling is about? Is there anything that might remind you of something or maybe nothing at all? We were just talking like the stairs. It almost as if like you can be kind of spread out and then as you go up closer, you have to bunch together to file in. It's, I've never seen stairs that do that. It's weird. Okay, that's, that's true. And when you mention that, I think of also kind of the train tracks and how they're kind of elongated and they fade and they seem to become more narrow the further away they become. Any, anybody else have any thoughts about the architecture, the building? It's overwhelming. It makes you feel small. That's very true, and that's a very good point, because like I said, going back to the importance of the individual in this history, one of the things that we do with teachers is that we really encourage that you translate statistics into people that instead of focusing solely on the millions of victims or the thousands who may have died in one place, you take those individual stories and you pull them out using primary resources. What the purpose of these cards do, especially in a teaching standpoint, is again, they focus on the individual. How many of you have somebody who is not Jewish? Anybody have somebody who is not Jewish? Okay. Who, what? I have Louis Brunel. He's a born to Catholic parents. He's a priest. Okay. Okay. We have a, a priest. Um, anybody else have somebody who is not Jewish? Somebody who's a Roma? Um, disabled? Okay. How about, does somebody have, how many of you have somebody from Poland? Germany? Austria, Italy, France, Denmark, the Netherlands, Greece, uh, Yugoslavia, okay, any other place that I did not mention? Romania, Romania Lithuania, Lithuania Hungary. Hungary, Czechoslovakia. Okay, so another purpose of these is for us to see the range of geography, um, that this did not happen solely in Germany, even though it began there. This did not happen only in, in Poland, that it spread geographically. It spread all the way into Northern Africa, and other parts of the world were impacted, even if they were not occupied by Nazi Germany. Look at the monitor. The control leader called in by radio and said that we have come across something we're not sure what it is. It's a big prison of some kind, and there are people running all over. Sick, dying, starved people. Mm. You can't imagine it. Things like that don't happen. As we go through, as I mentioned downstairs, I'm not going to point out everything to you, but there are certain elements that I want to point out because we will talk about them um, in the afternoon. This in particular, I think, is very striking for us as teachers, as social studies teachers, as teachers in the United States. Um, and you notice at the top, it says, Americans encounter the camp. We don't use the word in this picture, we don't use the word liberation. Why, why not? You couldn't just walk out and go home, first of all. And, you know, liberation has that connotation of being free. And yet, the obstacles that lay ahead for those who did survive will be so vast, the obstacles the challenges for the allied forces and relief workers who come into the camps. Um, so we chose that word encounter. And this was not, as we know now, um, this was not the first that we knew of the camps. It was the first maybe that we had seen of the camps with our own eyes. But we will see that when you look at this history again, we define it the years 1933-1945. Uh, where you all came in, we call that the Eisenhower Plaza. 
and this quote appears on the side of the building, of the museum structure. Um, because if you look at it, I think this is an excellent quote to use with students, because it takes us back to that theme of anti-Semitism and the theme today of Holocaust denial.